What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about a few different pro controller options for you PS5 users out there. So let's talk PS5 Pro Controllers. Well, it's gonna be a very short conversation because there's only a handful. Pretty much for the first year that the PS5 was out, you only had the option of going completely custom on a PS5 controller. And of course, I'm talking about your custom builders like Battle Beaver, Evil Controllers. They were putting out PS5 custom controllers only a few short months after the PS5 dropped. It wasn't until well after a year that the PS5 had been released that Scuf came out with the first like mainstream pro controller. And now, as we're wrapping up 2022, and the console's been out for a few years, a couple other manufacturers have decided to throw their hat in the ring and take a stab at the PS5 Pro Controller market. First off is Sony themselves. Sony just recently announced the DualSense Edge Controller, which is their custom controller that has two back buttons, as well as two additional mappable buttons underneath the thumbsticks, along with adaptive trigger locks, so you can change how long or short that trigger pull is. And it also comes with a bevy of different thumbstick options that you can use, whether you want short convex, long concave, medium concave, short convex, tall convex, con tall concave, whatever, you get the point. You got options when it comes to thumbsticks, as Sony is including like two of each size. And they're packaging it all in a wonderful carrying case, which is a nice bonus, as other manufacturers that we're gonna talk about here in a second don't have such nice packaging. But anyway, the Biggest advantage with the DualSense Edge that I see over any of the competition is the fact that Sony has created it with replaceable thumbstick modules. So what that means is that as a controller user, it's inevitable that over time you are gonna get stick drift on the thumbsticks that these companies use. There are Hall effect sensors, which use a different system so that it actually prevents stick drift from ever happening, but they're quite a bit more expensive and there's only a few controller makers that have those. And to my knowledge, there are zero for the PS5. But regardless, instead of solving the inevitable, Sony has given you quite possibly the best Band-Aid that you could ever find for stick drift, which is to just replace them. So if you have the DualSense Edge and you're using it for six months, eight months, whatever, you start to get stick drift in the left stick or something, all you have to do is go to Sony's website and purchase a thumbstick module for the low price of $19.99. It'll ship directly to you, you pop it in your controller, boom, you're squatted back up with the boys playing Warzone without having your cursor just float off the map. And Sony managed to pack all of this into a $199 price tag, which is actually very respectable coming from a first party manufacturer of a controller. Because not only is it competitively priced in the market, but it's also directly from the maker of the actual console that it's used for. So in theory, it should be the most reliable. Now the DualSense Edge is still in pre-order and it is not going to be released until the end of January, 2023, which means if you wanna get a pro controller today for your PS5, you either have to go the custom route of like Battle Beaver or Evil Controllers and spend upwards of $350, or just take a trip over to Scuff and get their tried and true controller, which does seem to have positive reviews. Or, let me give you this other option, as just this week, Razer announced the release of the all new Wolverine V2 Pro, which is their officially licensed PS5 Pro controller. And just upon first glance, you're probably like, Cole, something seems a little off with this controller. I thought you said this was a PS5 controller. I did, and it is. And if you're thinking to yourself, that looks awfully like an Xbox controller, you're right. Razer seemed to base the V2 Pro off of the current Wolverine V2 Chroma model in terms of its ergonomics and its shape and layout, which means yes, this Pro PS5 controller is laid out like an Xbox controller. But if you PS5 fanboys can get over the fact that yes, you're gonna have the same layout as those peasant Xbox players, then this controller actually does have some pretty cool features. So with this controller, you do get the standard Razer treatment. And usually what that involves is a lot of RGB and mechanical switches, which on a controller is actually quite welcome, especially when it comes to the mechanical face buttons, as well as the eight switch multi-directional mechanical D-pad. In addition to that, you get interchangeable thumbsticks. Although I'll be honest, you're probably only gonna get like one or two extras if it's anything close to what they gave out with the V2 Chroma. But nonetheless, you also get four back buttons laid out exactly as the current iteration of the V2 Chroma series 
as well as two additional bumpers. Now, the DualSense Edge seems to have a three-way trigger lock on their model, and Razer only has the standard two that they have on the previous versions of the Chroma as well. Although the copy on the website would suggest that these trigger locks might be better and provide more of an instant mouse-like click when changed. But only time will tell as they just released it this week. Now with all of those cool features, the only real big difference over the fact that this is officially licensed for PS5 and that it has that PlayStation style trackpad at the top is actually able to be used as a wireless controller. The previous version in the V2 Chroma was not. And speaking of the V2 Chroma, I've actually got one right here. Now, if you watched my last video, you're probably like, Cole, why didn't we see that thing? Did you just get it? I've actually had this bad boy chilling in my closet for quite some time. And what's funny is I actually used this for like a day or two and found that I preferred my Razer Wolverine Ultimate over this thing. Now, real quick, here's the Razer Wolverine Ultimate. Not gonna talk too much about it. You saw it in my last video. Huge fan of this controller. Love the layout, love everything. But I think the biggest thing for me was that I loved the ergonomics of this controller. I mean, these long swooping handles fit great in the palm of my hand and everything is just crisp, everything's clean, and it just feels sturdy and well-built. So naturally, when I unboxed this, and I started noticing things like gaps in the triggers and how light and plasticky this thing feels. I was kind of immediately turned off. In the hands, it doesn't have the same ergonomics as the Ultimate, and the ABXY buttons are way heavier to press. They're still mechanical, but compared to the Razer Wolverine Ultimate, they're a lot heavier of a press, which I guess for me and my personal preference, I enjoy a lighter press on my controller, but even still, they're not bad. Now, what is better about this controller that I like over the Wolverine Ultimate is this eight switched mechanical D-pad. This thing is amazing. And the bumpers are actually way better and way clickier than on the Wolverine Ultimate. But just taking a look at this thing, you'll start to see some wild similarities between this and the V2 Pro that we just talked about. And aside from the PlayStation branding and the trackpad that you'd get at the top, the only real difference that I'm noticing between the V2 Chroma here and the V2 Pro is that this is only a wired controller. But still, this controller comes in at $149, while the V2 Pro is $249. Now, I'm sure there are more things that are different than this controller other than the wireless capability and the trackpad and potentially the triggers. But at face value, it seems like you're pretty much just getting this controller, but wireless and branded for PlayStation. And I really hope that's not the case because spending an extra Benjamin on just those features does not seem like it's worth it to me. The $199 DualSense Edge definitely seems like the huge winner here when it comes to pro controllers, if not only just even for the fact that it has replaceable thumbsticks. Because Razer's only giving you a one-year warranty on these controllers and the V2 Pro, whereas with the DualSense Edge, if something happens with just a thumbstick, all you have to do is spend $20 and replace the whole thing and you're back in business. So I don't know. I'll be very intrigued to see if it is that much different than the V2 Chroma, because if it's not, I don't know how they're justifying that extra hundred dollars, but only time will tell. But that's it for today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did like this video, make sure and drop me one of these. I'd really appreciate it. And let me know down in the comments below what your favorite PS5 controller is right now. I'd love to hear. And if you like this video and other content that I've been putting out, make sure and hit that subscribe button. And if you're not subscribed to the channel yet, What are you doing? Thanks for tuning in, guys. And as always, stay happy, stay healthy, peace.